So welcome to this episode of Ted Talk Stamps. I am Ted the Talking Stamp Collector. And recently I was approached by the Ben Q people, Ben Q, and asked if I would like to get one of their reading lamps in exchange for an honest review. Right now my main lighting comes from the ceiling and no matter where I sit, there's always shadows uh, across my workspace. And I do have a wimpy little desk lamp. But it's, uh, it's pretty inadequate to say the least. <laughs> so when I got this offer, I said, sign me up. And uh, let me take a look inside and show you what it is. First thing I noticed, this base is very heavy. Let me grab my scale and I'll tell you how heavy. So the base weighs seven pounds, nine ounces. I need the right size screwdriver. Grab my trusty jeweler screwdriver set from Dollar General. All right. Even IKEA furniture is not that easy. Got an interesting plug set up. There's a wall plug. And then a, uh, a jack. So the on off switch is this touch sensor here. This loop. Touch on, touch off, touch on. And it's also got an adjustable brightness knob. And when you press the knob, it goes into, come back on, uh, color temperature adjustment. So you can go to white, bright white, the uh, uh, bluish white, and down to the warmer red end of the spectrum. And this thin curved lamp, it's an LED, will give you a wide area of coverage. So anyways, I just opened this. I know as much as you do right now. So I am going to use this for a few days and I'll let you know if this is the ultimate stamp collector's desk lamp. Stay tuned. All right, and I'm back with the results of my trials with the BenQ e-reading lamp. And if the lighting looks a little funky right now, it's because I've left out, I've turned off the photo flood lamp and I've closed the blinds uh, on the window. So we'll get a better, better look at what the light is, what the lamp is actually doing. And I'll just cut right to the bottom line. I love this lamp. And I'll take you through its paces right now to show you why I like it. 
Now here's one of my work areas. I've opened the blinds for just a second just for this illustration. As you can see, I get a lot of shadows across my work area. And if I'm working at night with no daylight coming in through the window, you can see the shadows even worse from the, uh, from the ceiling light. So then here's the BenQ lamp. And as I said, it's got a touch sensitive switch. And this knob on the top controls the brightness and the color temperature. Right now it will control the brightness. This is the minimum and there is the maximum. And I will give you some numbers in just a moment. You press the uh, button in the middle and it will change the, it will allow you to change the color temperature now with that same knob. We're at full uh, daylight white right now and turning the knob will take it down to the red end of the spectrum. Now there's about nine, about, it seems there are exactly nine steps from uh, full red. There's little clicks in the knob. So you have uh, nine increments between the full red and the full daylight white. While the brightness has finer adjustment, it's got about 18, 20 clicks that you can go adjusting the brightness. If you give the, the touch switch a long press, that will activate the, that will activate the um, auto sensor which will adjust the light level and the color temperature according to the ambient light to a comfortable level for reading. Another touch, well actually hitting the knob again will set it back to manual adjustment. This curved lamp head I really like because it really spreads the light out. You don't get a spotlight effect in just the area directly under the lamp. As you can see it's lighting up all the way from here out to the end of my workspace. And it's a soft diffused light. It's not harsh. If you look at the area under my hand, it is a very soft shadow. While at my desk at the computer looking at an online catalog, I can adjust the lamp just where I need it with the arms. Plenty of adjustment here. The lamp will swivel up and down as well as towards, uh, towards the screen, away from your eyes or away from the screen so you're not glaring off of it. And you can get it positioned just right. Right here I have it tilted slightly towards my eyes. You see the light looking into the camera. I don't see it with my eyes. I, my eyes are slightly above the level so the light is not glaring at me. And now I have a nice bright light, nice bright white light <laughs> to properly identify my stamps. And it is of course important to have a good bright white light of daylight color temperature to get accurate color rendition. There's so many stamps that have slight variations in the color and it's important to be able to have a proper lighting to, to distinguish the different colors. Also a pure white light will give you better contrast and just make the different colors, make the different uh, shades just pop out better. And I noticed that the first time I used it, when I had been uh, preparing some stamps for listing on my hip stamp store, I had a set where I could not, 
I could not see any gum on the back at all. This was before I had the lamp and I examined the stamps every which way I could and it looked totally matte like there was no gum no no shininess no no kind of luster nothing to indicate that there was any gum i i had written them off as being no gum stamps until i put them under the lamp checked it out and as you can see you can see the gum glistening So I did take some measurements with a uh, Illuminance and color temperature app on my phone. And these were some of the numbers I came up with. Now this isn't the most scientific test, but it, it'll give you an idea, you know, a ballpark figure of what we're working with here. I, uh, in taking these measurements, I had the light at about this height shining down on uh, blank, uh, printer paper, uh, standard bright white paper, and had the camera on the phone aimed right at the at the paper. With just my ceiling light in my uh, stamp den here, the color temperature is 2900 Kelvin, with a luminance level of just 65 lux. And as you can see, the recommended level for uh, luminance is 600 to 800 lux so it's I'm working in a cave <laughs> and as you can see at 2900 Kelvin I'm getting down towards the red end of the spectrum where we want to work with white light right in the center which is uh, daylight I believe is right around 5500 Kelvin and 5000 K is still uh, white light so you want to be working with a color temperature of at least 5K. Turning the lamp on, at the lowest level, we had a color temperature of 53, 5400 Kelvin and a luminance level of 649 lux. Turning the brightness all the way up, we had still 5400K. And now the luminance is off the scale really it's maxed out as you can see the blue triangle at 2000 lux taking it down to the red end of the spectrum all the way down it measured 2660 kelvin with a luminance of 500 lux and at the brightest level we were still at 2600 k and 1500 lux now I did try to make some comparison photos under uh, pure white light and the reddish light, but I didn't have much luck because the camera has a mind of its own. It's got the automatic exposure and it's going to have a certain amount of a white balance self-adjustment, which you know, if I had a fully manual camera, I could probably show you a lot better. But this is the closest I came. These two stamps here, or this one stamp, two pictures. This is under the white light and switching to the photo under the red light. You, will, you won't see a dramatic difference, but, but there is a slight change. So like I said, uh, hard to get a good comparison using the camera because another thing is that your eye color sensitivity is different than the camera sensors color sensitivities your eyes are very sensitive to red light which is why the old school uh, photographic dark rooms had red safe lights because they made the photographic paper well black and white paper anyways they made it uh, less sensitive or insensitive to uh, the red light which allowed you to then use a red safe light where you can see inside the dark room and find your way around without <laughs> knocking all your chemicals and enlarging equipment over. So I can tell you that when looking at a stamp 
with your eyes. There is a quite a noticeable difference between the between the white light and the red light. Of course, no one's going to use red light, but the but the point is that this does allow you to ensure that you have a nice white 5000K light to accurately assess your stamps. Now, this lamp is not cheap. It's $229 on Amazon. However, I don't think it's outrageous either, especially considering the cost of some items that stamp collectors will spend their money on in the pursuit of perfection or convenience. But I definitely give this lamp two thumbs up and I can recommend it wholeheartedly. So is this the ultimate stamp collector's desk lamp? I like it. And no one's going to take it away from me. So now, if you'll excuse me, I have some more stamps to sort. Until next time, this is Ted the Talking Stamp Collector, wishing you all happy stamping.